uh, continuing our uh, study that we've been doing leading up to Christmas. Uh, this morning we come to the Abrahamic covenant, uh, how God made a promise to Abraham uh, to uh, give him a uh, blessing. And uh, so this morning uh, in Genesis 15, uh, though we'll be jumping around uh, a little bit in Genesis to uh, see this covenant, uh, we'll just begin in verse 1 together and read down to verse 6. Uh, verse six. Uh, the scripture says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for uh, the scripture that we've read. Uh, Lord, for the example of the saints that have gone before us. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to see the promise that you make to us in this promise to Abraham. Lord, we pray that you would be with us and help us to do your will this week, uh, place someone in our path that we can talk to about Christ, uh, witness his goodness and the sufficiency of his salvation. Uh, Lord, we pray that if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them to be saved by the words that you spoke to Abraham. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries where they are, give them the things that they need to do your will, uh, be with our leaders, help them to know that they have a duty in this land to uphold your justice and your truth. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you'd forgive us. And we pray that you'd be with those that are not with us tonight, Lord. Uh, that you would give them strength and comfort. And uh, Lord, to, that they would know that you are with them. Uh, Lord, we pray that again you would be with us and that you would uh, keep us safe until the day of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray all this. Amen. So we've come to the Abrahamic covenant. We've gone through the covenant made to Adam and his seed. We looked at the uh, covenant made to Noah and to his descendants. And now we've come to Abraham and the promise, the covenant made with him and his seed after him. Just by way of parsing out what this uh, covenant means, I'd like us to first see that this is a gracious covenant that God made. As with all that came before, God makes covenants with men by his grace. Not because of what they've done, not because of the, they were worthy of it, but because of his goodwill toward them. We see that Abraham, before he uh, heard the call of God, was a pagan in a pagan land. In Genesis 11, verse 31, Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. They uh, originated from Ur, they were from the area that the Tower of Babel was built and that later was called Babylon, uh, the, the, the empire of Babylon. Uh, this was a pagan nation, a, a nation that was fixated on uh, ritual magic and uh, the worship of devils. And yet in Genesis 12, verse 1, the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. 
and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Abram did not merit God's grace towards him. In fact, it wasn't for anything in Abram that God showed mercy to him. But rather, he said, I will do this. I have called you out of your land. I have separated you from your pagan ways. I will make you a blessing to all nations. I will make of thee even a great nation. The Lord uh, was gracious in doing this. Uh, just as he was gracious to our ancestors when God called them out of their paganism, their idolatry and, and worship of demons, the Lord showed grace towards Abraham here. Also, he showed him grace when he promised to give Abraham children and an inheritance with him. In verse 4 of chapter 15, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Uh, Abraham's uh, children would be his own. It wouldn't be that he would leave his uh, inheritance to one of his servants, to someone in his household, as would have been customary in those days. But rather, he would have a child. Even in his old age, he would have a son. In Genesis 18, 9, also, it would be of Sarah, his wife. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, that is, the Lord said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Again, we see it wasn't that uh, uh, Abraham... Uh, got this by his own effort, uh, got children by uh, the, the, the virtue of himself and his wife. They were elderly. They were, as the scripture says, as good as dead. And yet God was gracious to them and gave them children. And so in Genesis 21, verse 1, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken, and Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the time set of which God had spoken to him. In verse 5, And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Both him and his wife were old, and it says, well stricken in years. That is, the, the years had taken their toll on them. They were... Uh, already feeling the effects of old age, and yet God graciously gave them the son Isaac. And so he was, he was gracious to them. It, it was undeserved that he would be uh, this good and merciful to them. He also promised, as we said, a inheritance to give them. In verse 18 of chapter 15, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. God said to Abraham to go into the land of Canaan, to go into uh, what we call today the Middle East. And he said he would give to him all the land from Egypt all the way back up towards his homeland, all the way up to the river Euphrates, that all of this would be inherited by his children. 
This was almost uh, seen in the days of Solomon in Second Chronicles 9.25, where Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king of Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings from the river, even unto the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt, all the way uh, to the land of the Philistines, northward towards the river Euphrates and all the way down to Egypt. He had political influence and it even says a rule over all of those lands. Uh, this was not the final fulfillment of this prophecy because uh, Solomon got this by uh, human means, by political marriages and by uh, uh, doing, uh, making pacts with the lands instead of relying on God. And this became his downfall. For King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in to you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. And Solomon clave unto these in love. The uh, uh, promise that was made to Abraham is a promise that God would fulfill, that God would give this to them as an inheritance all of that land. And uh, in fact, we can take from this uh, a general rule uh, that uh, as all of the, the land that's mentioned uh, was essentially the uh, socio-political environment of that day, all of the uh, great nations, we could say the known world at the time, uh, that what God was in fact promising was to give the entire world over to his people. But more than just giving them land and a physical inheritance, he would give them a spiritual inheritance, a position with him in heaven. In verse 5 of chapter 15, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. He gives him uh, he, he shows him this, uh, the, all of the stars in the sky, uh, possibly by a vision because this was uh, happening in the daytime. But he shows him all the stars in the sky and he says, look at them, number them and see if you're able to count them because so will your seed be. His children would be innumerable in the end. In Hebrews 11, 12, Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which by the seashore innumerable. The uh, promise is that he would have many children. He would make a great, the greatest and largest of nations. But in this promise, there's also a, uh, a little nugget of... Uh, something else, even a further promise than just that he would have many children. As the stars represented the angels of God, which stand before him always and are in his heavenly council, when God said that his descendants, that Abraham's descendants would be as the stars of heaven, he was in fact saying, they will sit with me in heaven, they will have a place in my kingdom. In Revelation 7, verse 9, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number as the stars of heaven. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne of God and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. The uh, multitude in heaven, uh, God's people redeemed from all tribes, tongues, people, and nation, counted as Abraham's seed, stand with him in the end forever in heaven. 
But finally, the greatest of graces that was shown to Abraham here is that he was counted righteous or justified by faith alone. In verse 6 of chapter 15, And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed, he trusted the Lord. He relied totally on the Lord. He heard the promise of God that he had made to him, and he trusted in him, and God counted this to him for his righteousness. In Romans 4, 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, that is, counted righteous by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. He has a reason to glory. He would have a grounds of boasting. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He did not work. He did not labor for righteousness. It was not his own righteousness that was counted to him, but by faith he received the righteousness of Christ. He believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. It was reckoned, it was given to his account that he was righteous. And this was the greatest of God's graces given to him. And so uh, the, the promises made to Abraham, the covenant made to him, we see again was a gracious covenant. It was a covenant of God's promises that he would do. In verse 1 of chapter 15, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He says, I will do this. I am thy shield. I am thy exceeding great reward. These are my promises to you that I will fulfill. And so it was all of grace given to Abram, uh, Abraham. But as we've seen with the other covenants, uh, this is not given without God stating a law which is, uh, which is, needs to be fulfilled in order for Abraham to receive it. First, that he would have to faithfully serve God with his household in administering circumcision. In Genesis 17, verse 9, God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of a covenant betwixt me and you. And the uncircumcised man child, in verse 14, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So the first part of this law uh, that is given is the law of circumcision, uh, that all of his children must be circumcised. They must be uh, have this token of the covenant on them. And if they are not circumcised, that is to show their separation from the world, that sin has been cut away from them, they would be cut off from their people. They, uh, the other law which is given in chapter 15 and verse 15 is that his children would have to go out and conquer in the name of the Lord. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, speaking to Abraham that he would die and rest with his fathers. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they, that is thy, the, the children of Abraham, shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. By prophecy, God said that they would go into another land, and after 400 years, they would return to the land, and they would conquer in the name of the Lord. Once the iniquity of the people became too great, they would come in, and they would take the land from them. This is a Another reiteration, again, we keep seeing of that uh, purpose that God had for mankind 
in the first generation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Uh, that, that they would go out and they would expand God's kingdom uh, by conquest, by subduing the earth and having dominion over it. And so these laws, along with all that had come before that God had revealed, are stipulated as requirements in order for God's promises to be fulfilled towards Abraham and his children. But this they could not do. They could not keep these requirements on their own. Galatians 5.3 says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. To them that are circumcised, they are debtors to do the whole law. If they are being circumcised for the purpose of, of, of fulfilling God's law and attaining to his promises by their own efforts, then they are a debtor to do all that God had commanded in order for them to receive it. And we know that none have done this. In Galatians 3.10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. They that are circumcised for this cause, they that enter into the law through circumcision are debtors to do the whole law and by the law and their inability to keep the law, they are cursed. They are unable to receive God's promises. And so, again, when God gives this law, it seems as though man will not receive his promises. But God has promised to fulfill his law again. When God gives a law, when he gives a requirement for our entering into his blessedness, it is always so that he fulfills it himself in the person of Christ. Galatians 3.11 tells us, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. The same faith of Abraham. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ came. Christ uh, kept the law for us. He was circumcised on the eighth day, as we read in the book of Luke. Uh, he went out and by his power, he conquers all of our enemies for us. Jesus was the one, in fact, that was prophesied in Genesis, in the promise to Abraham. In Galatians 3.16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. When God promised descendants, when he promised that he would give Abraham a son, he was only by way of necessity talking about Isaac. He was primarily talking about Jesus, to thy seed, which is Christ. And this, again, is the continuation of that first promise that was made to Eve uh, about the, uh, against the serpent in the garden. In Genesis 3, 14, The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He said that he would give the woman a descendant, a seed, and he would overcome and conquer 
on our behalf. This is Jesus Christ who fulfills the law of the covenant made to Abraham. A gracious covenant, a covenant undeserved by anyone, and that God himself would fulfill the law in order to bring the blessing of it. All of the covenants we're seeing uh, have the, their basis for blessing us in Jesus Christ. In Genesis 15, verse 8, we even see that God himself and by himself cut this covenant and made promise to fulfill it. In Genesis 15, 8, he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer and th of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds defi divided he not. This was a custom in those days when a promise was made, a covenant was cut. They would take an animal or, or several, depending on the severity of the covenant. They would kill it and they would take the pieces and lay them uh, over against each other in a line. And the two parties of the covenant would walk through uh, between the pieces of the slain animals. And in verse 17, it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the river, the river Euphrates. God himself came down and he by himself, of himself, walked in the midst and made this unilateral promise to Abraham. Uh, he established the covenant and he would fulfill the covenant. And so believers this morning, this covenant we see that God made with Abraham was about Jesus Christ and about the blessedness that we have in him. In Jesus, we all receive the benefits of Abraham's uh, promise that was made to him. Even though we are not physical descendants, Jesus Christ is the descendant of Abraham. Galatians 3, 7 says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Not only his physical seed, the nation that would come from him. As then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. We are heirs of the same promise with him by faith. And so as we are blessed with him, and we see that all of it is in Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go out of this place, keeping ourselves pure as the objects of Christ's redemption. And let's go boldly into the world to do his work that he's called us to do. And always being thankful to him uh, that God gave us that blessed child, Jesus. And now if there's an unbeliever here this morning. The scripture says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Search your heart this morning. See whether there be any sin in you, any evil way. If you've broken God's law in one respect, then the scripture says you are guilty of all. You shall not inherit the kingdom of God by your own righteousness. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. I pray you this morning that you would search your heart, see your way, see that you are unworthy of eternal life, and yet seeing that Jesus Christ is able to make you worthy. Abraham was justified not because he was a good person, 
not because he did well enough in his life, but because he trusted in God who was able to perfectly count him as righteous, not with his own righteousness, but with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. John 3.35 says that the Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The only standard by which you will be judged on the last day is whether you have trusted in Jesus Christ. If you have trusted in him or do trust in him this morning, then you will be counted righteous with his righteousness. But if not, your sin remains on you. You will be counted unrighteous, unworthy of God's heaven, just as we all are by nature. But you can come and trust in him this morning and be saved. And I pray that you would do it before it's too late. And again, believers, we know the blessedness that is with our father Abraham. We know that uh, all of it is in Jesus Christ. And so as we look forward to Christmas, uh, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate Christ coming for us, uh, let's remember uh, that salvation has always been by the same way. Just as Abraham was justified by faith, so are we justified by faith in Christ today. And so let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for your blessed promises to Abraham. The Lord promises made not only to him, but to your son, Jesus Christ. And through him, uh, the promise made to us. The Lord, we pray that you would help us to uh, live uh, uh, lives that are becoming of those that you've redeemed. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to do your will in going out to the world and conquering it by the proclamation of the gospel. Lord, calling men and women to trust in Christ and be redeemed by him. Lord, we pray that this morning, if there are any in this room or that listen to the message later that don't know him, that you would draw them to him and that they would know him and be saved by him. Lord, we pray for our missionaries, the Bandarus, that you would help them in their uh, uh, ministry, Lord, uh, in the troubles that they surely have. Uh, give them courage and comfort. Lord, help them to uh, know that you're with them. And Lord, by that, to uh, empower them to your work. Lord, be with our leaders. Help them to uh, do the thing that's pleasing in your eyes. Uh, help them to uh, rule us uh, according to your just law. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you would forgive each one of us where we failed you. We ask all this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.